Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Spindle TV. My name is Lanny Shaughnessy. I'm going to be your host this evening. And tonight we are going to design, we're going to design a kind of a monogram wedding sign. I uh, had a family member reach out to me and say, hey, going to get married. Can you make a wedding sign for me? I said, sure, I can do that. And that's what we're going to do. Hopefully you all are doing well tonight. My uh, looks like my lips are lagging a little bit from my video, so we won't uh, stay on me too long. And we'll jump right into it. Hopefully everybody is doing well. And yeah. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get this party started. <laughs> All right. So, like I said, uh, I had someone come up to me and ask me, uh, a family member come up and ask, hey, can you make a wedding sign? Um, <clears throat> they're going to have almost like, <clears throat> if you will, two types of well, one wedding. Uh, they're going to have one wedding, but uh, there's going to be two different groups of people. Uh, where he comes from uh, and where she comes from. And they want this sign and they want a place uh, around it where people can sign, you know, from the different groups, they can sign, you know, something and all. And the initial design was to have um, uh, the wedding sign in the middle and then the outer perimeter be able to, you know, them to be able to write on it and sign on it and everything. Uh, and, um, I'm going to do something just a little bit different. We're going to, we're going to do something a little bit different and, uh, we're going to design this up. Let me, uh, pop up here. Hello, Michael. Welcome. Thanks for joining me. Michael, my youngest viewer. How's it going, buddy? Hopefully you're having a good night. Hey, Crystal. Hopefully mom and dad are doing well as well. All right. Let's get into this. Second time viewer, Jimmy Ray. Welcome, bud. Thanks for joining us. All right. Let's look at our job setup here. Let's get right into this uh, so we can move along uh, and everything. Uh, so the initial size of the design that they asked me for was 24 inches, 24 by 24. Uh, and um, so, okay, I said, all right, that's, that's what we'll do. Now, I've got the thickness right now set at three quarters of an inch. Uh, that may change. I don't think I want it that thick uh, to, to begin with and everything. Um, it's probably going to be thinner in the center uh, areas and stuff. And we will see how it all comes to be when everything's said and done. But we're going to start right now with a single-sided job. 24 by 24 by three quarters. I'm going to be touching off on the material surface for the Z zero position. And I will be starting from the bottom left corner. Um, so with that being said, let's click OK. And you'll see on the screen, I've got a couple of things kind of laid out. I've got some flourishes here. Uh, I think I'm going to end up using this one. We're going to redesign it a little bit so we can get into a little bit of design play. And of course, I've got a P here. I've settled on this particular font for the P, but there's a lot of different fonts I could have chose from, but I've settled on this because the last name is going to be Powell, P-O-W-E-L-L. -L. And we're going to do kind of a split font design. We're going to add some flourish to it, some vine flourish and everything. And uh, we're going to play around with that. Before we do, let's get into our uh, flourish here. Let's get that on the board. We've got to size it down and all, but we've got some things that we've got to do to it. Notice that it's kind of broken up uh, here and right here where these dots are. We've got to kind of connect, kind of, kind of connect that stuff together. And then I've got some areas over here that we've got to uh, connect together. We've got a little floater out here that we got to bring together and all. And so with that, I uh, also have a floater out here that we got to connect in. So with that, let's go ahead and get started on the design aspect of this. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup this. This object is grouped together right now. Uh, ungroup is over here on the edit objects tool, first row, fifth icon. Now it's also the letter U 
on the keyboard. All right, keyboard shortcut is ungroup, and that will allow us to work on these individual vectors and things. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna start over here and I'm going to get rid of these circles because we're gonna end up connecting these lines together. And uh, I'm gonna take this object here and I'm going to rotate it a little bit, kinda bring it in a little here. And uh, I'm gonna bring it back up here a little bit probably let's say about there and let's do a little bit of trimming kind of trim these things together i'm gonna use my interactive trim tool and let's get rid of this and uh this line this line and this line to kind of connect that together uh so it goes and I'm going to go into node editing a bit, uh, just a little bit. And um, I'm going to take these nodes here, hold down my shift key, and I'm going to select these nodes here. And I'm going to pull that kind of out just a little bit to give me a little bit more thickness. And that looks good. That doesn't look good right there, right? That looks sloppy. So we're going to go back into node editing. And I'm going to get rid of this node. I'm going to right click on it and delete this point. A node is a point. Uh, but, you know, uh, a coordinate, if you will. And between each node, there is either a line, an arc, or a curve. Uh, and, um, yeah, so uh, I just want a nice, smooth curve. So I'm also going to delete this point here. And that will give me these two anchor points that I can kind of adjust my curve ever so slightly there. Now I want to go ahead and tie these things together. So these three things together, I want to tie that together so that swirl comes straight up. Uh, I don't need this middle part. Uh, I'm just going to focus on these two parts here. And on node editing, I'm going to come in and I'm going to delete these two midpoints right here. I'm going to hit the D key. I'm going to select them and hit the D key on my keyboard uh, to get rid of that. And then this line right here, I'm going to right click on it. And that's called a span. The line arc or curve between two nodes is a span. So I'm going to delete that span. Okay. That'll open that vector up. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to get rid of these extra points by selecting them and hitting the letter D on the keyboard. And then I'm going to right click on this line and delete that span. And that'll open this up. Now I can connect these two together to create that continuous kind of swish there. So I'm going to go with my uh, arc tool. And I'm going to select a point right. Let's get kind of up close and personal. I'm going to select a point right here and right here. And I'm going to just pull that arc out. Uh, and then I'm going to do the same thing here and here and pull that arc out and now that i have that uh you know kind of uh somewhat connected it's not fully connected until i come in and select all this and go to the join tool first icon last row of edit objects and i've got four open vectors selected i want to join them into one continuous vector uh, so that it's one continuous vector. And then I want to come in and play a little cleanup. So we got a little bit of cleanup to do right here. I want a nice flow. So if I go back into node editing, I can hit the letter N on my keyboard or click node editing mode here to get that node editing in there. And um, I want to delete this point. And I want to delete this point up here. I want this curve to be kind of somewhat of a natural curve coming into this line. And so right here, this node happens to be like a black node, meaning there's only one anchor point on one side and I'm only manipulating one side of that line. And what I want to do is I want to right click on it and smooth that point, but it's not going to let me. So it's not letting me smooth that point uh, to 
uh, straighten that out. So I'm actually going to delete that point. I want it gone. And that brings my line way up here. And now I have these two anchor points that I can pull in and start working with to create my curve. Okay, I can start messing with these two anchors and kind of complete my curve here and all. And so I'm happy with that line. Now I've got to work on this other one right here. So if I come in here again, I really want to get rid of these two points in the middle. So I'm going to delete them. Okay. That's going to throw that line kind of up here. And I want to look back here and see what I've got going on. So I've got a anchor point here. I've got this point here and then it comes around to this point here. I'm going to go ahead and delete this other point right here in the middle. And I'm going from point A to B basically. And uh, now I can kind of uh, start to manipulate this curve. <clears throat> and uh, start to kind of clean that up. I want to get a little bit... little bit of thickness going in here and then just kind of into that flourish right so I'm okay with that um, I'm all right with that so now I need to connect down here <clears throat> and once again I'm gonna get rid of my two nodes right here uh, select this one as well and I'm gonna hit the letter D on my keyboard and it always leaves one behind, but we'll go ahead and hit the D again, put our mouse over it. And I wanna delete that span. And then the same thing here, I'll hit the letter D to get rid of that and then delete this span. Now this line happens to be curving in. I can tell that by this guy right here, there's a little bitty hook where it's kind of going in this way and I want it to actually be going, you know, kind of pointing towards here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this so it's a little bit more straight. And then I'm going to select this and this. And I should be able to join with a smooth curve once. But you see what happens? It jumps over and it connects, it connects the uh, wrong lines together. So um, I'm not going to do that. And the reason why it's doing that is because this line is really kind of pointing towards that line. You know, it's kind of pointing towards that line. So it's wanting to throw that together. So I really need to kind of pull this out a bit. And let's see if it allows us to join now without jumping over to the other line. Nope, still wanting to jump. So I will go back in with my uh, arc tool for right now. And I'm just going to connect those two points together. Uh, and I'll clean this up in a minute. I'm just going to go ahead and get the arc in there. Um, let's. One more time right here and here and just kind of pull that in. Looks a little rough, but that's okay. We're going to clean it up with node editing. Now, if I select all of this, uh, once again, um, in my join tool, uh, I have those four individual vectors, the two. So it's one, two, three. This one's three. And then all of this is four. So when I have all these selected, I have four open vectors selected. And when I hit the join button, it will make one closed vector, right? So I can do that. And now I can come in here and play with this and clean this up some. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's jump into node editing. And we've got a lot of nodes happening in here, you know, a lot of nodes and stuff. And what I want to do is I want to clean up where I connected these lines together. Uh, so I'm just going to hover my mouse over the, ink, uh, the nodes and I'm going to hit the letter D to delete these points. And ultimately what that does is it gives me this kind of connection from point A to B here. And now I've got to manipulate my curve 
and get it smoothed back out, you know, there. Uh, here, last one on this, uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to hit the letter D on the keyboard for delete. As I put my mouse over the node, I can go ahead and delete these points. And again, it pulls my line. There's no nodes in there creating that curve. So I've got these two anchors here and um, I can go ahead and start to manipulate this curve again. Okay. And just uh, kind of clean that up. All right. So you guys with me so far on that? No big deal. We're just connecting vectors, basically. Now we've got uh, here, these uh, vectors here, we need to connect to this uh, little swoosh right here. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, pull this out a little bit, but I'm going to grab these guys here. And I'm simply going to select these points. And I'm going to use my left arrow key. And all I'm going to do is drive them. And I need to select these two points here as well. These two anchors there. Uh, holding down the shift key to select those. And I'm just going to drive this over. And uh, notice this anchor right here. I didn't have him selected. I'm going to drive this over a bit just so I'm kind of overlapping, right? There's no uh, real, you know, working with it. And now that I'm overlapped, I can just go ahead and trim those lines together, right? To create that continuous line here, okay? Uh, I am gonna take and go into node editing and I'm going to grab this guy and pull him back just a little bit right about there, just to give me a little bit of meat right here. Not much, just a little bit. And um, then we're going to continue on. So as this flows around, uh, we come into uh, this area here. Let's get out of node editing. And this kind of uh, leaf pattern and all is already connected to this swirl coming around. Uh, and the only thing that's holding this part right here, and let's see if I can draw a box or a circle or something around it. Let's just uh, do that. This leaf area right here, the only thing holding that when it's floating there, because all this wood right here is going to get cut away. There's not going to be anything in there. It's going to be able to be seen all the way through to the middle. And the only thing holding this little part on here is that little bit of wood right there. And uh, I want to change that up a little bit. Okay. Uh, so I don't mind it being anchored right there. That's fine. Uh, but I want to see if I can widen that up just a little bit. But I also want to connect down here some. So let's get rid of the rectangle that I drew. I just drew that to kind of outline what I'm focusing on. Uh, on this here, I'm just going to drive this back a bit just to create that overlap here. And again, I'll just uh, trim those two lines to trim that to join that together. And then up here, because I drove that back, it kind of brought this area uh, together here. And what I'd like is I'd like to combine this here to where I got a little bit, I got this little hook coming off and that's it. So if I go into node editing mode, I want to take, and there's a lot of nodes that we have to deal with and stuff. And you got to kind of focus in on what in the world is all going on there. But what I want is this anchor right here. If I pulled it back, you would see this anchor right here is connected to that leafy pattern. So I'm going to put that back, control Z. I want this line right here that comes into here. Um, and what I want to do is I want to turn off the smoothing on this blue node back here. And that's going to create an anchor point that I can just move. Let's 
do that again. Turn off that smoothing. Uh, that's going to create an anchor point where I can just move one side of this line and not the other side over here. And all I want to do is I want to kind of just bring that in a bit so I have more of an overlap right here. And then I'm going to come in and once again, uh, just trim, trim this. Now on this here, I don't want that jog right there. I want a nice smooth flow into that swirled leaf, if you will. Uh, so on my node editing, I'm simply going to just uh, delete this point right here. And it's getting me there. I'm going to delete this point here. That'll pull that in. I'm going to smooth this point. Kind of bring that in. And now I should have a nice flow into this. So this part here is going to be floating free, but it's connected here and here. I don't really need to widen this up. If I wanted to, I would just grab this node and pull it back a little bit and pull this over a little bit uh, just to give it a little bit of uh, width there. I would delete this point and I would pull this one back a bit. And of course, I grab the anchor and not the point. Let's zoom in and grab the point and pull that back a bit. And, uh, you know, just kind of widen that breach up, if you will. Okay. Now, coming around on this guy, oops, let's get out of node editing mode. Coming around on this guy right here, that's a pretty thin, pretty thin uh, piece right here. And um, I'm, I'm not sure that I want that flimsy piece of, because uh, this is going to be cut out of some thinner material. I'm not sure if I want that splinter, if you will, kind of just kind of floating there, this guy right here. Uh, and so what I think that I'm going to do with this is if I pull myself into node editing... One more time, and again, man, it's almost intimidating when you see all the nodes uh, and stuff. And I'm going to show you how to minimize some of them uh, quite a bit in just a moment. But it's it's almost kind of intimidating when you're looking at all these nodes like, whoo, Lord of mercy, what do we do here? Uh, and everything. And all I want to do is I want to decide if, you know, if I'm going to do something with this, what do I want to do? Do I want to make it thinner? Do I want to make it thicker or not thinner? I mean, do I want to trim it off? What do I want to do? Well, I want to make it thicker. So the easiest way without having to deal with all those nodes is I'm going to come right here in this area, right here. And um, I'm going to go into node editing here and I'm actually going to cut the vector right on that corner and then kind of right across from it, I'm going to cut that as well. OK, and what that's done now is I've isolated this stem, if you will, of the vine. I've isolated it from everything else. And I want to do an offset. I want to offset it outward. And, I, you know, I don't know what I want to offset it. Let's go a quarter of an inch and let's see. Let's delete the original and see what that does. And no. Right. It's just too much. Uh and so let's bring it down halfway. Let's go an eighth of an inch offset and uh, look at that. And no, you know, not liking that too much. Let's look at a 16th. We'll cut it in half again. Offset that. That I'm okay with. I just need to get this point back. You know, I lost my point here when I offset it. And, um, but I'm okay with a little bit more that little bit more thickness. I got to contend with this here. So all I'm going to do on this is in node editing, I'm going to, first of all, notice all these means and nodes that got created. Well, let's talk about how we get rid of them. I'm going to go over to what's called my curve fit tool. This will fit curves to a selected vector. And uh, it will take these points and kind of uh, minimize them based on, I want a busy a curve. So it has some flex to it and everything. I want a tight tolerance. I don't want sharp corners. 
and I want to replace the vectors. And when I preview this, by my tolerance and everything, it only removed some of those points. So let's increase the tolerance a bit. Let's go 10 thousandths of an inch. And um, there we go. That's more like it. All right. So I've smoothed everything out and I've, I brought it down to this many nodes. Okay. We're going to do that with the rest of it here in a moment, but this gives me something a little easier to work with and manipulate. Now I can go into node editing mode and uh, I'm going to just drag this over and snap it to here. I'm going to drag this over and snap it to there. And um, then on my corner here, uh, this guy right here, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one, delete that point, and that's going to bring me to here. And what I'd like to do is ultimately pull this out a bit. Let's, let's look and see what I want to do here. I'm actually going to get rid of that span. I'm going to delete that span, which will get rid of that. Okay. And I'm going to see if my join or my extend tool will work for me. If I extend from here to here, right, from this one to this one, it gives me that nice point there. And now I can come into node editing mode. And again, let's get out of node editing mode first. When I extended that, uh, it didn't join it, right? It's still an open vector. So I need to join those three vectors as one. Then I can go into node editing mode and clean up a little bit. So on this, um, I'm going to kind of pull this point back a little bit. And then I'm going to get rid of this big hump right here. And this straight line, I don't want, I'm going to turn that into a bit of an arc. And I'm going to pull that arc ever so slightly. So it kind of arcs into it. And here on this straight line, I'm going to turn this into an arc. And kind of pull that in. So it curves somewhat into that. And looking at it, if I come back, and I know this is a lot, a lot going on here. But if I come back and look at point A, at the point, follow that line to point B that I want that curve, natural curve. I don't need this point right here in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And I'm going to manipulate that curve with the anchors that are attached to those nodes. So I get a nice smooth transition there. Okay. So the only thing I did to this, just all the thing I did was just widen it up a little bit, right? Widen it up a little bit. All right. Now looking at all this, if we look at this in node editing mode, holy bejeez, there is a lot of stuff going on here, right? A lot of nodes and everything. And most of this is made up of Bezier curves. I can tell by the majority of blue anchors, you know, a lot of the blue anchors are tied to these Bezier curves here. And of course, let me undo that. Um, but so in my curve fit tool, uh, I'm going to tighten up my tolerance, Bezier curves, and uh, I'm going to preview and see what it gives me and um, say, okay, let's First of all, let's see what that does. Let's click OK and go back into node editing. There's still a lot going on there. OK, now I've got more blue than I do black. Right. And so if I come in here, uh, let's see if we can. Let's see if we can tighten this up a little bit more. And that's about as good as it's going to get. So I can go ahead and click OK. And um, 
That's about as good as I'm going to get that one. There's a lot of busy curves and stuff in here. So all in all, we'll call that good for the shape. All right. Done. So that was the only cleanup that I needed to do. Now, this particular part here, uh, we're going to set it aside again. Ooh. And let's focus on our 24 inch by 24 inch design. Now, and, and by the way, if you guys and girls have any questions, ask your questions because I can answer those as I go along. Uh, but let's start off with a circle. Let's find the center of our material here and let's drag out a circle here. And um, what I'm wanting to do, imagine if you will, okay, imagine if you will, uh, where, where you have... Uh, I don't know, two families, his and hers, right? Or, or two groups of friends in two different locations and things. What I'd like to do is what, what the original plan was, was to have the design here in the center and then they could just sign, you know, all over this and this would be put into a frame. And that's good. I don't mind that. Uh, I'll probably make one like that for them or what have you, but what I'm thinking is that um, that this area here, okay, will uh, have up at the top. Imagine this is a let's let's call it half inch thick, right? Half inch thick, and um, I'm gonna almost have. Let's see if I can. How can I illustrate this the best way? Let's imagine if we were looking at this in a side view with square corners. And let's say that it was a half inch thick. At the top, I'm going to have an opening. I'm going to have an opening. <laughs> What's going to be the best way to design this opening space bar? Let's move this over. Let's pull this. Uh, let's go back into note editing and pull this back a bit. Let's pull this up a bit. Do a little bit of trim, trim, clean up. Now, these two lines do not line up with one another, but I want them to line up with one another. So I'm going to come in here and select both of these anchors. Uh, actually, I'm going to select this anchor first, and then I'm going to select both of these anchors. And uh, I want to move them left and right. So I'm going to hit the X on my keyboard to pull them out. So they're that X hitting that X key, align them along that X axis left and right with one another. But I want to have in there to where they can drop something in, they can sign something and drop it in, whether it's the shape, little heart shapes, little circle shapes, little, I don't know what the shape is, but I want to create at the uh, top of this frame and let's do a little bit of an offset. So, you can imagine, let's offset inward, uh, 16th of an inch is fine. Let's select the vector. Um, let's go a little further than that because this is a big part. And imagine that, uh, you know, the front area is going to be kind of a plexiglass front and I'm going to have a kind of a wooden frame coming around this and um, there's going to be an opening at the top where they can drop in and these things will collect on each side. That's a, that was a terrible kind of explanation, but on each side of this, uh, there'll be a little bit of a divider right here. Nah, unity, right? Marriage unity. I won't put a divider in there. Uh, each family can kind of throw in their little uh, arts or whatever shapes and they're going to kind of fill in around here uh, on both sides and they'll kind of join together here and mix and mingle. But, um, um, yeah, it's going to be, uh, something like that. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but it will, uh, um, it will later, <laughs> but, uh, 
So uh, this is going to be hollow here uh, with the sign that we're going to make in the middle. And then there's going to be a little opening up here and a little opening up there. It's going to have a plexiglass frame front kind of protecting the sign. And when they drop these little coins or whatever in that they sign, these little tokens, if you will, uh, they will start collecting, you know, on each side and everything. And um, they'll just mix and match in there and stuff. Now, I didn't pass this uh, plan on to the bride and groom. They might not hate that. They might hate this design. Who knows? But they did like the initial center design, but they didn't know anything about this. They just wanted to be able to put marker to wood and sign that. And I'm all for it, but man, not really. All right. <clears throat> so uh, with this, let's see what we've got here with our outer diameter or our diameter, our size of our circle here. Uh, right now on this 24 by 24, this is about 18 and a half inches. Uh, and um, so I want, uh, I believe only a, I believe a, the hearts and all kind of fall through two inch, two and a half inch here. So 18, 19, 20, I've got six inches to kind of play with. Um Let's bring this up to let's go 19 and a half. And if I measure here horizontally with my measure tool from the edge to here, I'll have about two and a quarter inches, which will be plenty for those tokens to fall down and collect in down here. Um, not a big family. We don't come from a big family and all that stuff. So uh, it'll be plenty of room to build up kind of around this. All right. So with that being said, now I've got my inner area. On my inner area, I want a, uh, I want to have two circles, two inner circles and all. And so I want some space in here where their names are going to go right up here. Their names are going to go here. Uh, the last name is going to go here with the middle initial and some flourishes. But I want to create a bit of a rim. So I'm going to offset this inward a quarter of an inch. Okay. And then the spacing for the names, how tall I want the letters to be for the names uh, I believe I'm going to go, I'm going to take this and offset this in. Uh, I believe I'm going to go with, well, let's find out what I'm going to go with. Let's open up our text box. And um, I'm going all capitals. And uh, let's uh, get a normal font here. They want just a basic, not a basic plain font, but pretty standard. Uh, let's go with, since it's all capitals, let's go with a B. Hit the letter B on the keyboard. It didn't take me where I wanted it to take me. Let's go with a Belmont font. That looks good. All right. Let's size this down. Currently it's 12 inch tall letters. Uh, let's go one and a half inch tall. I'm thinking, and let's go bold on that. So I'm thinking that this is going to be the height of the letters, but let's find out. Uh, I'm going to use my edit text spacing and curve tool, and I'm going to arc this up. Okay, and I'm going to drag this up here. Now, the top of the letters are going to kind of be connected up here. So, uh, I want to need that to follow that arc pretty well. And if this tool doesn't, you know, get me what I want as quickly as I want, I'll just use my text on a curve tool, right? Um, and I can, uh, you know, have the text follow the curve more naturally, but I believe I can get their 
pretty quickly just by a little bit of moving around. And of course, I don't want to overlap that much. I want just a slight, slight bit of overlap there and, um, and everything. So I can kind of focus in on some of that. I'm going to hold down my control key and use my up arrow, and that's micro movement. That'll let me kind of micro move that up a little bit. And I'm going to pull this down just a little bit more. And again, hold the control key down and bump that up. And I should be pretty consistent, but I'm not. I'm a little heavy here, right? A little heavy here. So that means I need to pull this arc. Let's kind of balance it out a little bit. Slowly kind of pull this arc just a little bit. And hold down my control key and bump that up. Oh, ever so close. Uh, let's um, pull that down, control key, and bump that up. And I'm good with that. I'll clean up all these lines and stuff. Now, did I need to mess around with that? Did I need to uh, sit there and screw with that text like that uh, and, you know, that, that curve tool? No, not really. I didn't. I didn't need to mess with that at all. Um, I could have simply just came in here and uh, gauged about where my text is going to fall. And I could have node editing. I could have cut the circle vector here and here, right? Uh, I'm going to open up another text box since I did work on that. I'm going to leave that there, right? And um, if I said, uh, if I did it again, here again, Vicky, old, and I brought this down to here. Um, let's move this out of the way for a second. I could have very simply used text on a curve tool. I could have selected my text and then selected the curve I wanted to curve it to. I need the text on the other side, right? But, uh, I need it the right way. So I want to be below the curve like that. And, um, you know, it would have wrapped that text to that curve just with a couple of clicks of the buttons, right? I didn't need to fiddle with that if I didn't, you know, want to. And it would have the text follow the curve, you know, just as easy. Either way that I wanted to do it, I could have done it. Right? Right. Now, the one thing that's different um, with this here and this here, notice that the spacing between my letters is still somewhat good here. But here, they're kind of crunched together, right? Well, that's not really an issue either, you know, because I can still use my edit text and spacing tool, and I can hold down my shift key, and I can, you know, spread that spacing apart. Um, that way as well, right? So, uh, either way, whatever works best for you, you know, get her done, right? Um, all right, so either one works. All right, now that I've done that, I've, I've cut my line, if you remember, I cut my circle here. Well, I need to put that back, so I'm going to select the lower part of the circle and join that back into one vector, so it's continuous. There we go. Awesome. Now I know my text is an inch and a, did I do an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter? I think I did an inch and a quarter. We'll find out. I want to offset this inward. Let's go an inch and a quarter. Let's see if I hit the mark. Okay. No, it was an inch and a half. So 1.5. 
Okay. And now I've got that inner circle here. All right. Y'all cool with that so far? Cool. All right. Now with this, I also want another quarter of an inch kind of rim because all this is going to be hollow. Uh, this is going to be wood. The letters are going to be wood. So I want to go in another quarter of an inch on this. Keep that consistent trim. Okay. So because all this here is going to be hollow and uh, between the letters is going to be hollow and all that jazz. Um, all right. Cool beans. Now on this, I do want, I do need it to overlap some right on these letters. I need them to kind of connect in the top and bottom. And I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you kind of two ways that I could approach this. Uh, number and I'll, I'm going to be approaching it the same way on the middle name in the in the bottom. But if I come in here and let's uh, let's use our circle here. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm just going to hold down my shift key and size this down ever so much to where I get a small amount of overlap. Okay. And the overlap's going to vary depending on the letter and where it's contacting it. And I'm okay with that. I just need a small amount of, I need it to overlap all of it. Okay. And the same thing here, I'm going to use my circle and I'm going to pull this out a little bit. And I can see that orange line where I'm at. And I, again, down at the bottom, I just want to get a little bit of overlap. Okay. Uh, that was probably a bit much. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little tighter and let me hold that shift key down and pull that down just a little bit. Okay. Need to get a little bit of overlap on there, but not much should be coming all around now. <clears throat> now, On, on this here, I could very simply come in and trim my overlaps away, right? I could come in here with my trim tool and just, you know, trim, trim, trim. Now I can't trim text. So in order for me to be able to trim it, I got to convert the text to a curve. And you're like, wait a minute, didn't you already curve the text? It's still a font. It's still a font. So I got to convert to a vector, convert to a curve, a curved object. And uh, now that allows me to come in and, you know, trim to kind of blend this together, right? And I can trim to blend that together. So everything kind of falls in there. Now, that is one way of doing that. And I'm going to undo this. Now, I've never done this on a curve, so we're going to see if this works, but it should. Um, let's see here. Um, Mr. Michael Casey says, can you rotate a single letter? It looks uh, the eyes look off. Right. So he's saying, can you can you now rotate a single letter uh, and everything? Um, once it's converted to a curve. Yes, I can come in and I can rotate you know, uh, and, and, and adjust whatever I need to adjust. Okay. And all I need to. Okay. So, but yes, you could. Now, uh, the second method of way of doing this is I'm going to select both of these vectors and I'm going to group them together as one. Okay. And I should uh, be able to select my text and group it together. Also, not that, that I, I shouldn't have said the word should. Uh, I need to select my text now that I've converted it to a curve. And I need to group it back together so the software treats it as one object. Okay. So basically, I have two objects, my text and these rings. 
right here. Okay. So if I select these rings and then I come in and select my text last, my text being, being selected last becomes a boundary. And, and if I come in here and subtract the trim tool, sorry, not, uh, not subtract the trim tool, not interactive trim, but the trim tool, I should be able to clear either outside of my boundary or inside of my boundary. And of course I want to clear inside of my boundary because my text is the boundary. What that should do for me, if I clear inside that boundary and everything, it should redraw those lines around those letters. Like you see here. Okay, I don't know if you can see those pink dotted lines and everything. And by doing that, I can come in now and I can select the font right? Um, I can select the font. Let me grab my font, select this and turn this off. Okay. So I just got the font selected here and I should be able to, let's just for a second here, let's move that font out of the way. And I should end up with an outline connecting those outlines together and everything for that, the, the names. And I could say yay or nay, right? You know, I could say, yeah, I like it that way or I don't. You know, um, my router bit's never going to be able to get in here and uh, clean that up uh, and things. So I got I to gotta do some cleanup. So that's one way of kind of creating that outline. And I will be using that method for the middle part, but maybe not so much for this part here. So I'm going to undo that move and I'm going to undo that trim or that, yeah, that trim. And I'm going to go ahead and old school it. And I'm going to ungroup the letter U and the letter U here. I'm going to old school it and I'm just going to go with my scissors and trim away. Now, ultimately, when I trim this away, I'm going to end up with the same look, right? You're thinking, well, you know, if it works the other way, just as good, um, you know, why not stick with what you've got and, and everything? Because if it's going to look the same way as it did when you did it with just a click of a button, which it is, right? See, I still got those hooks and everything there. Um, let's trim this up here so you can see, um, you know, if it's going to look the same way, then why not just do it the other way and be done with it, right? Why go through all the trouble of having to trim, 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 right? And I'm just showing you both ways, right? So either way. So if I undid that trim and I unclose this tool and I undid that group, or that ungrouping, should I say? Okay, so I should have these grouped. Once again, if I select this group first, this group second, which is my letters, that's on that. Subtract or trim. Sorry, I always want to say subtract. And I want to clear inside of my boundary. Let that do that. And then with that, I want to select the font and just delete the font out of there. Okay. So I've got that. Now, um, if I wanted to enhance the letters a bit, or if I want to use a different font, all that stuff, pick your font, pick your battle, pick whatever, and uh, go for it. Um, now there's some areas I need to clean up on this. Okay, so uh, very simply, I'm going to go into a node editing mode. And um, in the case of this, I'm just going to come right here and cut the vector. And I'm going to come here and cut the vector. That will allow me to delete this. And I'm simply going to rejoin that vector with a smooth curve. 
and be done with it. Okay. Um, and so on all of these kind of little jagged points and everything here, I'm just going to go into my node editing. I'm going to pick a spot somewhere in this general area here, and I'm going to cut the vector down here. Cut the vector. That will cut this point from there. And then I'm going to take this and join with a smooth curve. Okay. So, and just kind of working my way back to you. Working around, working around. So let's come over here. And uh, things look good right here. Same thing. Uh, I just need to close this off. So uh, let's pick a spot right here. looks as good as any. And right down here, cut the vector, get rid of that point, and join with a smooth curve. Okay, just to clean it up. Last one. <clears throat> get rid of that. And then join with a smooth curve. Okay. So now I've got those little legs and everything uh, cleaned up. I'm good with everything else there. And so this is going to be the top. And I might change my font or whatever, but you're getting the idea, right? You know, of, of this. If you want the, you know, the letters to be, the names to be taller and all that, go for it, right? All that wonderful jazz. Now, down here, there's going to be a wedding date. And I don't know what the date is. So, we're going to leave the date out for a minute, but I'll put a fake date in there. Uh, yeah, but I honestly don't know when the wedding date is. I did. That's one thing that's very important. If you're going to make a sign for somebody and they want the wedding date in there, ask what the wedding date is. And here's a good question. Um, is there a hotkey for, uh, joining curves? Um, and also Lainey, uh, can you use the weld tool? Right? So we got two good questions here and, um, Let's start with, uh, can you use the weld tool? So um, when we had those letters and all, uh, the question was, hey, can you use the weld tool to weld everything together? Well, the weld tool doesn't keep the inside stuff. It only keeps the outside stuff. So if I would have welded this, it would have gotten rid of all the middle letters in the middle, and it would have just kept the little humps that were overlapping, little humps. It would have, it would have uh, erased all the stuff in the middle. So the weld tool would not have been a good option for this. Uh, the second question is, is there a hotkey for joining curves? So joining curve vectors, you know, like joining this join tool, right? And so if we go up into our keyboard shortcuts list, And we come into the vector documentation page that it opens up. Okay. Join open vectors, right? Okay. So from here, uh, join open vectors. Um, let's go to keyboard shortcuts. There are no keyboard shortcuts listed in that tool. So I do not believe that there's a keyboard shortcut for it, but let's quickly um, join vectors form. So there's a hotkey to open the letter J to open the join vectors form, the join vectors tool. That's the J. Okay. Uh, and then as we come down, uh, let's go to... <clears throat>
tab navigation, double-sided job, mirror, align, groups. So we know the grouping and ungrouping. Uh, node editing. Let's see here. These are the keyboard shortcuts for node editing. Moving an object, rotating an object, scaling an object, polyline tool, draw circle tool, ellipse tool, draw rectangle tool, drag polyline, draw star, and that is it. Okay. That is all the pages on our keyboard shortcut list. And so the join open vectors, if I actually go to the tool, um, it would tell me in this tool if there was any shortcut keys for it. The only other, the only shortcut key is the J key just to open the tool um, and everything. And, uh, you know, uh, just like for the, let's see here. Like the draw ellipse tool, the draw circle tool or the draw ellipse tool, either one. If there are keyboard shortcuts, it will tell you those. And in the draw or the join vector tools, there isn't one. The only join vector tool is the letter J opens up the join vectors on the keyboard. Okay. All right. So hopefully uh, that answered y'all's two questions um, and stuff. And if you need a, uh, just real quick, let's do it up here. Let's grab a circle. Let's offset that circle inward 1.5 inches. Let's group those two objects together. Let's open up some text. <clears throat> and uh, hold that up. <clears throat> All right, close that text tool. I'm just doing this to see where my text ends because I'm going to cut this vector. Let's ungroup it for a minute. I'm going to cut this vector right here in node editing. And over here, I'm going to use that as my arc. Okay. I'm going to, first of all, have the correct arc selected and my text. And I want to be uh, below the curve. Okay, uh, let's join this circle back together. So we'll grab this and this. We'll hit the, um, let's select that and that. Let's hit the letter J on the keyboard to open that up and just click the join button to join that back together. It's quick and simple. All right, let's uh, size this uh, circle down just like we did a moment ago on the other letters uh, just to get a bit of an overlap. I want to show the, the question about the welding. So let's get a bit of overlap there. And same thing with this one. Let's pull this up just ever so much. All right, so we got that overlap, you know, and everything. And again, I'll group these together, group uh, my text. I'll go ahead and convert to a curve and group it together. So I have two objects here. And if I have all these objects selected, these two groups, if I use the weld tool, it's going to remove whatever's in the middle and just keep the humps. Okay. It just keeps the humps there. So the weld tool removes everything that's in the middle. All right. All right. So I just wanted to show that. So that way you guys and girls know it. All right. 
So we've got uh, going on here. I don't know if I'm completely sold on the font yet and all that stuff, but that's okay. It's getting there where we want. Uh, let's get a date in here. I know it's in uh, March. So I'm going to just pick a date. Um, so bold. All right. Um, I can pretty much estimate... on this arc here that about here. So let's go into node editing and let's pick this one right here. Let's cut the vector there. Cut the vector there. And we're going to use uh, that arc and this text all right <clears throat> and i want on that one i want to be above the curve like i am so we'll go there now my 17 2021 doesn't quite reach so uh, I'm going to go into node editing because these guys here, I need to kind of scale them up a little bit. I need to get a little bit of, you know, overlap on them. And uh, this guy here, hold down that shift key. I don't like these. Uh, I want more of a little bit of a boxy. Um, oops, I don't want to pull that way. Uh, let's go this way. Get a little bit of overlap. <clears throat> and of course, let's do that one more time. Come on now. That's enough. Every time I pull one, I'm going to hold down my shift key. Yeah, I'm not happy with this font. Bear with me a second. I'm trying to decide what's going to be the best way to pull this thing. All right, let's do one at a time. That's kind of stretching it. I don't want to do that. Bum, 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 bum. I'll probably go with just an aerial square font on this, but that's all right. Let's get this. All right, let's bump that over a little bit. The two. Let's bump that over a little bit.
not super stoked with this font, but hey, it'll work for now for the lesson. This is not going to be the final design. <clears throat> okay. All right. So for now, that will work. Uh, once again, let's select all of our uh, letters and numbers. This little quote mark. Group that together as one. Uh, these, ah, we got to join this lower circle, this lower arc here. Join that and then group those. And it don't need to be really grouped because it's already one closed vector. You see how the back of that E, it's a closed vector. Um, yeah, so group doesn't do anything for that. So, Hold down my shift key, select that text last, and I want to trim clearing inside of the boundary. Let it redraw that boundary around the letters. Uh, then I can come in and select my font and delete it to get that number date in there. Right? All right. So, um, and then of course, you saw me do it up above. We go in and clean these uh, points and everything up, you know, uh, on these areas and everything here. So let's uh, let's do one. We'll clean this one up. Uh, let's get rid of. Is it going to let me? Let me see here. Hold on a second. Okay, that's one continuous loop. So. All right, notice it won't let me trim that. Ba -ba -ba -bum. All right, let's go into node editing. <clears throat> We're going to delete. Let me see here, first of all. That's part of that C. This is part of that C coming up. So we're going to delete this span right here. We're going to delete that span and that one. And let's see, I want this to come up. So we will trim. Oh, can't do that. Still got to work with it in node editing. So we'll delete this span. Get rid of that. Oh, stop playing around there. And delete this span. Get rid of this. And delete this point. Now, these two guys are not joined together. I'm going to drag one on top of the other, uh, which should automatically join it together. And so uh, we'll have that clean up there. But, you know, like we did on the other one, we would just, in node editing mode, we would pick a spot, cut the vector. I'm going to come down here and cut the vector, get rid of this arc area here, select this and rejoin with a smooth curve. Okay. So, and here I could almost kind of leave that. My bit's not going to be small enough to get in there, you know, in that gap. So I'm just going to delete that out of there. Um, on the two, we got a big wide point here. So very simply enough, in node editing mode, I'm gonna cut the vector here. And I'm simply gonna cut the vector kind of almost straight down. 
get rid of that point and join. In this case, I'm joining with a straight line now. Okay. Uh, same thing with this too. Now this is a curve, not a straight line. So uh, I'm going to just pick somewhere, somewhere. We'll go here, here. And I will join that with a smooth curve. Oops, after you select it. Okay, so we would continue on uh, in the areas that need to be done and uh, clean that up, right? So we've got one here, one here, and one there. You guys have seen me do it 100 times, so we're not going to do it again. I'll go back and clean those up in a minute. Let's focus on our middle section here. Let's get our, let's get our flourish going on here. So our P, we're going to uh, size this down and I'm going to hit the F9 on my keyboard to get it centered. Okay. To get it centered on my material. And uh, then, you know, I can decide once I'm centered on my material, I can decide, you know, kind of how big or small I want that P, right? Uh, so I'm just going to go about like that. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to take and draw a rectangle. And uh, that rectangle, I'm going to go... Uh, Two inches tall, two inches tall, or I might go two and a quarter, two and a quarter, let's see here. Yeah, two and a quarter works for me. All right, I'm going to select that and I'm going to get that centered up on my board, that rectangle there. And uh, so that's the center. I want the name to kind of fall in the center and everything. And um, what I need to make sure of is that when the text gets cut in here, um, you know, gets put in here and stuff, that I can still recognize this as being a P, you know? So my rectangle doesn't necessarily have to be dead center, right? I can bring it down. I can have the name come across here. You know, I can have, you know, wherever, you know, I uh, want it to uh, flow. I just, you know, I want that back initial to be somewhat recognizable as a P when it's all said and done. Um, <clears throat> you with me? You with me? All right. All right. Let's talk about our flourish now. Let's get our flourish in here and kind of get it sized appropriately and see how this is all going to intertwine. Um, so let's see here. I am going to mirror that. And I'm going to flip it about a line. So I'm going to draw a line along the center of my rectangle here. And I'm going to select this flourish. I'm going to select this vector. Hold down the shift key when you're selecting more than one item. And notice what I did here when I drug it up. I forgot to grab that inner part. So let me undo my move. And let me group these two things together. So um, when I'm moving this thing around, uh, I don't lose any of the parts or pieces. So let's get that. Kind of moved around. Trying to pick a spot, any spot. <clears throat> Looks good as any. All right, let me draw my line. Let me get my line drawn back in the center of that rectangle. 
And I want to take this flourish or this uh, vine little, yeah, flourish, if you will, in that line. And I want to go into my mirror tool and I want to flip it about the line. Now, if I don't have a line selected, if I have just an object, that flip about line tool does not become active. I have to have the object and a line to flip it on. So I want to flip about the line and kind of get up into uh, this area here. Wonderful. All right. On these two here, I want to kind of just stretch them a little bit. Stretch a little bit in there. Almost looks like a heart. No, it doesn't. All right. So uh, now, okay, now uh, I can get rid of my center line. All right. And um, this is where the weld kind of comes into play, right? The weld. Um, I want to keep the outside areas, right? And get rid of the inside areas here uh, and stuff. So if I select my P, I'm going to convert it to a curve uh, and I'm going to group it together because there are, uh, you know, two parts of that P. Uh, I want to group it together. And if I take my flourishes here, and my P, if I weld them together, okay, it's going to kind of uh, tie that in to the uh, the P, if you will. Um, and I want to undo that because I want to get a little bit of a, I want to get a little bit of the let me see if I mirror this one let me flip this one for a minute I don't think that's what I want to do but let me flip the script a bit I want to be able to see some of that leaf there there uh let me flip let me mirror this uh oh, that's rotate which would have worked as well but let's mirror this i'm just gonna i don't want to create a mirror copy i don't want to well i flip it about job center that's fine but i want to flip it horizontally oops uh, turn off flip about job center and flip it vertically. All right, I kind of like that symmetry a bit. So once again, let's select this, this, and um, uh, those two items and uh, this group here, and let's weld that together. <clears throat> okay. And again, you know, I've got this rectangle here. There's We're, gonna, we're about to do something with that rectangle, but that's kind of like the P flourish so far, right? Uh, so I'm about to do something with this rectangle. Let's go ahead and offset it. Remember I made it two and a quarter. Uh, I'm going to offset it inward a quarter of an inch, trying to keep things consistent with my trim here, which is roughly a quarter of an inch. Uh, so I'm going to offset that an inward a quarter of an inch. I want sharp corners on it uh, and offset that inward like that. Okie dokie. All right. Okie dokie. All right, and um, let's go ahead and uh, let's get our last name in there. And on the last name, uh, the one request was uh, it be spelled out, you know, with uppercase and lowercase. 
And um, I'm not fine with that. I don't, I don't like the way that looks on a split name sign or anything like that, but I, it's not ultimately not my sign, right? I gotta, I gotta convince them why it would look better as a, you know, um, as all capitals and things. So it's up to me to make a good sales point and, um, you know, make it make sense. Now, at this point, I do not have to maintain my font. You know, I can I can have this, you know, as long as it's legible and everything, I can use whatever font I, you know, would like. And to help me maybe get an idea, pick a font, I'm going to use... Um, wordmark.it and I've taught you guys or showed you guys wordmark.it uh, before and uh, it's great. Uh, it helps you choose your font. So wordmark, M-A-R-K dot I-T. And Let me enable my pretty soon. Google is not going to be supporting job anymore, but well, that's all right. And so in here, if I type in what it is that I'm uh, working with, when I hit enter on my keyboard, uh, it will show me all the fonts that are installed on my computer. But notice that it says, uh, you know, it's showing my fonts. But notice, I mean, I've got more fonts than this. But it says, can't see all your fonts? You know, these are your default system fonts. Install our browser extension to see the rest of your fonts. So since Google's going to eventually be getting rid of the JavaScript, which would do that anyway, I'm going to go ahead and install my browser extension. Uh, quickly. Bum, 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 bum. And I'm going to click on Add to Chrome. Add extension. Bum, 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 bum. Work with it, work with it, work with it. Uh, has been added. Very good. Okay. So now I can go back to Word Market and refresh that screen. And let's type in uh, the last name again. And this time when I hit enter, it will show me all the fonts that are on my computer. So now I can quickly uh, cycle through and see, and it's going to take a minute to load all my fonts, uh, but I'll be able to cycle through and see which font is going to like appeal to me for that middle, you know, uh, area, that middle name area. So we'll let it load the next bunch. And um, so let's see here. I am, come on, we got work to do. Move it. I am almost 
See, that royal signage would look pretty cool, but uh, I don't like the way the two L's are. So, that was the one. We're almost through them all. Let's see here. Okay. So, I believe I'm going to probably go with... I want to say the Belmont Mount Bell MT. Um, it's got a, it's still got a fit, you know, it's still got to kind of match somewhat, but it can be distinct. It could be, um, Yeah, I'm going to stick with the Belmont MT. MT. I could go to defont.com and, uh, you know, grab more fonts and all that stuff. But uh, for right now, uh, this will be fine. So let's go ahead and get this sized up. Now I'm actually going to size. I'm going to size this up somewhat. And... Um, I'm going to get my little bit of overlap going on here. And then up here, I'm going to shrink. Let's close our text tool. We don't need that open anymore. And uh, let's pull that down. And all I'm going to do is I'm pulling it down uh, to where I get a little overlap on that inner rectangle, the inner rectangle. You know, just a bit of overlap on the inner rectangle here. Okay, um, I've got some overlap across the bottom. All right, once again, selecting my rectangle first, selecting Powell last, I'm going to trim, clearing inside that boundary, which was the last vector. And it's going to redraw the vectors around that last vector and I can go ahead and delete the font to have the name in there. All right. Now, now that I've got that, I can go ahead and group all of this together. Make sure not to miss a lick. I can group that together so it's treated as one item. And I've got this vector here that I've got to uh, contend with, right? And remember, the um, a well tool will keep the get rid of the inside stuff and keep the outside stuff. Right. You know? Um, and so if I, if I tried to select all of these vectors, right. All of my outside stuff. Uh, let's grab this little guy. Oops. Grab this guy in here. Uh, and if I group this together now, if I welded that, um, to this, it's getting rid of everything in the middle, right? Everything I just worked on. So again, I'll show you if I weld that, it's getting rid of everything I worked on. It's kind of blending, you know, I, you know, that's not what I want, okay? So what I do want to do is I want to ungroup this and I want to select just this rectangle right here, the outer rectangle and this group here. And if I weld that together, that will weld that outer rectangle with the font there, getting rid of everything in the middle. Okay. So I'm just welding it to the outside rectangle, not the inner stuff. All right. Cool beans. Now over here, very simply, I'm just going to trim. All right. But I've got, this is welded right here. Uh, no, it's not. I'm sorry. It's uh, it's all ungrouped now. Good. All right, so I can trim 
this area here, okay, that's my inner ring. So this goes bye-bye, that goes bye-bye, this, this, and that, all right. And over on this side, get rid of these two outer here. And then inside this ring, one, two, three, down here at the bottom, one, two, three. All right. And so that, in a nutshell, is going to be the sign. Okay. So up to this point, let me see if I can get it somewhat sized and centered. Uh, that's going to be the sign. And I can still tell that this is a P. Um, you know, uh, there's, you know, I can still tell that's a P, uh, and everything. And, uh, you know, working with it now, let's answer a couple of questions off topic, but do you have, uh, but, uh, off topic, but do you do any rotary work tutorials? Yeah, uh, I do when I'm talking on the fourth axis and stuff. Uh, yeah, they're spread out throughout my uh, my channel, uh, Suicide All Times, uh, and uh, they'll continue to be spread out through the channel. I have a rotary axis, so we talk about them from time to time. Yes. Uh, and uh, you can note edit the font you like and move the eyes separately. Yes. Yep. And then, very important, save often. Mike Nolan's screaming to me, man, dude, save, save, save. Now, this is already called the wedding cl sign class, so all I have to do, it's already been saved initially, so I don't have to do the file save as. All I need to do is over here, click on the save tool right here, uh, and, uh, you know, save my changes. Okay? Cool. All right. <clears throat> Righto, righto. Now, the key thing to this, because all of this is going to get hollowed out, we're going to have these two rings here. Uh, then all of this is going to get hollowed out. We're going to have these binds and stuff, and everything between the lines is going to get hollowed out. And so the key thing is here is, one, choosing a tool path that is going to make this look good and not look like crap. Uh, number two is uh, having a bit small enough to get into the little nooks and crannies and also has a long enough cutter to be able to cut through the thickness material that I want to cut through. Now, this particular name part that's going to be kind of inlaid into this frame uh, that I'm going to be making, think of this white box as the frame and this is going to be an inlay part. Uh, this is going to be cut out of uh, quarter inch material, and it's most likely going to be a. Um, I am either going to uh, do it out of plywood so it doesn't uh, curl or warp, you know, as the smaller pieces and weathering and all that stuff. I'll probably do it out of a nice uh, Baltic birch plywood or something. Uh, or even depending on what wood I decide to go with, the contrast, I could go with a nice. Um, maple plywood or cherry or something. I don't know. Uh, I don't want to go dark. I want to go light. Light's going to be a better contrast. It's going to read better um, than if it was a dark, like a walnut or whatever. It wouldn't read as well. Um, if I was doing this now as a 3D carving or something, you know, text on text type style like this, then yeah. Uh, you know, I could uh, I could get some you know, good contrast uh, and stuff out of it. Oops, sorry. Uh, and all, but uh, this is going to be kind of a cutout. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in my material setup here and uh, I'm going to change this to a quarter of an inch because that's what that sign is going to get cut out of. And um, the, let's delete this tool path. That was an old one. All right. Now, on this guy here, 
it's going to be a profile toolpath. Going to be following the lines, right? Uh, I'm going to be cutting through uh, the quarter inch thick material. Now, my eighth inch bit uh, could get into a lot of areas, but there's a lot of areas it can't get into. So if I had an eighth inch diameter, 0.125, uh, let's drop a dot right there. Um, you can see that eighth inch diameter compared uh, to, you know, a lot of this, uh, you know, it will be able to get in and everything uh, in those areas and all. But there's going to be certain areas that it just can't get into, which means those areas aren't going to get cut the way they, you know, that I would like. And that's a sacrifice that I have to make because there's no way that that bit is getting in here. Right. So I have a 16th inch end mill that uh, has a half inch cutting fluid on it. And therefore, I would most likely in the case of this. I would use that because I'm only cutting through quarter inch material. And this is going to get into some tighter areas. It's about as far as it's going to get there. And then it'll radius it off here. So that part won't get carved. But, um, you know, it's going to be able to get into some finer, tighter areas and everything. So for me, the tool of choice is going to be my 16th inch end mill. And toolstoday.com, give a shout out to them. They're a good website. They got lots of Amana brand tools. Uh, that's where I got my 16th inch end mill from. And so shout out to tools today. Um, and of course, you know, when I select this, okay, when I select this and, um, you know, I do a profile cut, I need to choose what am I cutting outside the line, inside the line, all this stuff? Well, if I choose outside the line, no problem. The software knows that these are inner vectors and everything. So it's going to reverse the toolpath and do the inside of the line for them. So I don't have to sit there and make up a bunch of different, you know, toolpaths. It'll, it'll convert them properly to inside or outside, depending on what it is. Uh, and so uh, let's go ahead and just uh, calculate this just to get a look. Now, there's one open vector that was identified. It's going to be ignored. I don't want to ignore an open vector. In some cases, I do, but in this case, I'm curious and I want to find it to see if it's something that's critical that I need to close up. So I'm going to right click on my screen and tell it to select all open vectors. And yeah, that's a critical vector right there, right? I can't have it not ignore. I can't have it ignore that. So I need to close it. I need to join and close it. Okay. So let's do that one more time and calculate. Now that calculates. Um, suicide at all times, uh, depending on the size of your machine, uh, mid-size uh, CNCs and everything. No. I don't. Um, large machines that are capable of up to going up to a thousand inches per minute feed rates and things like that. Uh, any feed or speed chart calculator or even there's even uh, the CNC cookbooks uh, speed and feed calculating wizard. It's there's a fee for it. But, um, you know, those are designed for more commercial, larger machines because, you know, they uh, they're not designed for mid-size units and all. So unfortunately, I do not know of any mid-size. And I work with a mid-size unit, so I don't know any good free uh, feed or speed material apps out there. If anybody's an app creator, there isn't one for mid-size units. Create it. Freaking put that thing up for sale and make a mint. Because uh, there's a lot of mid-size units out there and everybody's kind of guessing, you know, right? Kind of deal. Um, all right. So if we preview this cut, now I didn't add any tabs to this right now because I want to be able to kind of remove the material uh, and stuff uh, when I cut this out to get a general overlook. And so um, let's go in and don't click the wrong circle. So let's refresh that. Uh, uh.
Okay. When you're clicking your areas, why is it getting rid of that? Hold on a second. There's something still connected that shouldn't be. Let's reset that. Let's preview. Let me take a good hard look at what's what here. Why that shouldn't have deleted. That shouldn't have deleted at all because it's not connected to anything. Let's go through that again. All right, let me tighten up my uh, we're gonna it's gonna take just a little bit of time, but I gotta increase my quality because uh, that the the uh, pixelation is kind of touching each other. And um, so we'll give this a second to uh, carve in a little bit higher quality. And um, yeah, oh, undo last. Yeah, suicide at all times. Uh, I always forget about that button. So uh, he's like, hey, use the undo last. And um, that's exactly what that tool is for. This tool right here, undo last. If I, you know, if I'm clicking an area away, and I click into an area that, uh, you know, it gets rid of something I don't want. Let's say this here, then I can undo last to put it back. And I always forget that button. It's a very helpful button. Thanks for throwing that up, uh, you know, and reminding me. All right. Now that I have a little bit quali higher quality preview, now I can, you know, click on these areas and it's not going to uh, delete the things that it's not supposed to delete. So... We'll go through and just quickly get rid of some of this waste. Let's see. That's supposed to go. That's supposed to go. And that's supposed to go. All right. Cool beans. And get rid of that and that. Let's start up here. And, um, you know, a lot of guys and girls don't know. All right. We have these five views up here, by the way. Z view. Uh, we have a angled view. We've got looking down the x-axis, looking down the y-axis. You've got those. Um, on your uh, moving around here, if you have a roller wheel on your mouse, you can hold that down like a button to pan this around. Uh, if you have a roller wheel on your mouse, you can zoom in and out. Your left mouse button will tilt uh, and fade. And uh, you can also hold your control button uh, and your left mouse button to pan around. Right? All right. Just want to let you all know case there was somebody out there going hey man how's he moving that screen around let's go in here and okay so let's get back in here couple little whoops let's zoom in here a couple little stragglers these little splinters I'm gonna ignore them I don't need to waste time on that right now um, almost there And so, this is going to be the um, center medallion. And uh, let's tilt that a little bit. And you see how it's pixelated. If I were, if I would have uh, turned my simulation quality up, you know, I'd even get a cleaner, you know, a more clearer, cleaner image so you guys and girls can see it better. Uh, but you get the gist, right? All right. Now, 
this is going to be I can't I don't want to use the word inlaid because that's not the right word. Uh, this is going to be inset into a contrasting board. So the background is a contrasting color to pop. Um, as an example, uh, let's go in to our options here and let's change our background color. Let's go with a solid color here and let's pick, I don't know, uh, Let's go to custom color. And that's going to be 16, 255, 27. I'll do the same. That's the gradient, uh, but that's okay. Let's custom 16. I forget what that one was, 225 and pull this up. That's all right, close enough. All right, let's click OK. All right, so there's going to be a contrasting background color uh, to the actual, um, you know, board, you know, and then it's going to... Uh, it's going to have, again, kind of a cavity on each side. Let's get out of that, you know, here and here. Uh, it's going to, on my actual board, um, here, let's see if I can just, uh, let's take, let's take and draw a rectangle. Uh, let's off. Let me think. Let me think. Let's offset that inward. Inward. I need a good amount of meat. So let's go uh, half inch square corners. Um, yeah, that'll work. And uh, let's select that and this vector here let's see if i can make this look like what it's going to look like uh let's do a pocket cut <clears throat> uh quarter inch in mill quarter inch i don't want to go a quarter inch deep i want to go deeper i want to go it's going to be three quarter inch material i want to go half an inch and I just typed in a quarter, as I said, half an inch. And um, we'll go with the grain. Calculate. Oh, sorry. Hold on a second. Let me change my material size back. Okay, let's do that one more quick time. Dun da da dum. Pocket cut. 0.5 quarter inch in mill raster cut. Calculate. Uh, let's see here. We'll go walnut for that. Looks terrible. Very pixelated on uh, that. So we'll go with just a dark cherry for right now, just as an example. Uh, let's pocket that out. Let that pocket out. And uh, let's see here. Let's ask answer a couple of questions. Um, Harvey has a question. Isn't there a chart with ranges for chip load for different materials? Isn't chip load based on feeds and speeds? Uh, yeah, Harvey, there is a chart for chip loads, uh, but all it shows you is for the different materials, the different diameter of the bit, 
the chip load, right? And chip load is calculated by taking your RPMs times the number of flutes uh, divided by your feed rate. Yeah, RPMs uh, multiplied by your number of flutes divided by your feed rate. And so uh, that doesn't tell you, you know, it doesn't tell you, um, you can do the math and reverse and all, but it doesn't, there's not a chart there that shows you the actual RPMs and the feed rate and everything. You know what I mean? Okay, cool. Uh, let's see how. Blue Knight says, you like vacuum tables? Do you have one? Now, y'all might have been having a question uh, yourselves on things. Uh, I do like vacuum tables. I don't have a vacuum table. I have vacuum pods. Now, I've made vacuum tables uh, in the past, and they're sitting leaned up against my wall because I use individual pods uh, with my vacuum pump and stuff uh, from time to time. But, yeah, I've had whole table vacuum tables that I made out of, you know, uh, HDF and um, – high density fiberboard, like a little bit denser than MDF. Uh, and, um, the, uh, you know, um, melamine, uh, that was the word that was trying to, you know, I've, I've tried melamine or I've, I've had tables made of melamine, uh, but I use individual pods. I have different pods. I have a bunch of different pods that I can use that are all daisy chain to my pump. All right. So, Imagine if you will, okay, uh, and here I should have done this. I should have done this. Give me a second. Let's mirror that to the other side. Let's select both of those and let's pocket them as well. See if it lets me do, uh, add these into the pocket cut with them overlapping lines. Let's see if it, uh, Let's see if it pockets that area. Yeah, I didn't think so. I didn't think so. So I'll do those individually. Pocket tool pad. Nothing changes here. Calculate. Preview. Okay. Now the center... And I'm such a, oh, God, I'm such a dumbass. Hold on a minute. Lord have mercy, Laney, what are you doing? Let me offset this outward just a tiny bit. Um, I need to go um, quarter of an inch. I got to make sure whatever that I still have my spacing that those parts can drop down in here. You know, so I got to keep my, I only got so much space to work with. Um, and I went the wrong way. Let's offset outward. Excuse my language, guys. I just uh, caught myself. And, uh, okay, one more time. Let's grab this vector, not this one. Not this one. This one. And let's turn these off. And let's calculate that one more time. All right, let's reset that preview. Let's preview these two tool paths. Uh, good question. Um, Oh, real quick. What are those for? The vacuum pods? There's, it's like a vacuum table, but they're individual pods, you know, different size pods. You can get them from Rockler Woodcraft. Rockler Woodcraft, uh, you know, we sell them at digitalwoodcarver.com vacuum pods. 
there's they're they're just uh, they're little instead of full table vacuum table, it's individual pods that you can lay out and clamp on your table uh, to our T tracks we can clamp to, and then you can hold down different pieces of wood. Um, Lenny, how are you going to hold this down to the table? Uh, would you use double side tape? Well, so this one, the big, the, the, the main board here, uh, I've got this entire rim out here that I can put clamps on. Okay. So I will, as far as the big board here, uh, that will be, uh, clamp down. And then my smaller board, um, the uh, one with the uh, cutout, the quarter inch board, uh, I'll double side tape that most likely. Double side tape that. All right. Now, now let me. Let me see if I can do this. Imagine, if you will, that there's going to be a quarter inch ring around here. So imagine, if you will, um, and it's going to be hard to imagine. Not really. But uh, there's going to be a pocket in here, uh, a quarter inch ring. And this is going to be cut all the way out so I, I can I, I can do that that's simple enough let's grab this and uh profile cut uh going 0. 0.75 um quarter inch end mill on the inside of the line Calculate, uh, preview, how deep did I make that profile got come on now, Let's go in here. Yeah. All right. Gosh, I wish I could show two projects at one time. All right. So there's going to be a clear plexiglass front on this kind of a frame. And I'll probably do a nice uh, decorative trim or something. I don't know. But it might. it's going to have a, a clear front. Uh, that centerpiece is going to be basically inset into this. This is going to be hollow all the way through. And let's go back to our options here and let's uh, change this back to white. Okay, so it's going to be hollow, right? And um, it's going to have that inset uh medallion if you will that we just carved uh will be inset in there uh it's going to have a clear plastic glass plexiglass front here and they'll be able to sign these little heart shapes i think it's going to be heart shapes i don't know i'll ask them what shape they want but they'll be able to sign them and drop them in and they'll drop and start collecting around here uh and um you know then it'll have a bracket on the back to hang on the wall but uh, it's going to be inset into that piece okay so it'll be hollow back there and i said i wanted a contrasting color back there so i did want a contrasting color back there so i might only instead of profile cutting that out i might only pocket cut that leaving the back there. And uh, sorry about that. Um, so let's uh, really quickly, let's regroup on that because I said I wanted a contrasting background. 
So let's take that vector again, this inside vector, and make it a pocket cut instead of a profile cut. And let's go down. My material is going to be a quarter of an inch. So I'll recess it in a quarter of an inch. So we'll do that. Um, and a uh, quarter inch end mill. Calculate that. Reset this preview. Get rid of this profile cut right here. And preview. all those toolpaths. So preview the visible toolpath. And then that sign is going to be made out of a maple. Sorry, let me get Ronnie's question off there. Sorry. Um, so the sign board, the middle sign, the, the names and everything, that's going to be kind of a maple. Uh, and then I'll probably do a nice walnut panel. Uh, I'll glue up some walnut and make a nice walnut panel for a really nice contrast. Uh, and then the little hearts or the little shapes or whatever that they drop in, you know, after the guests sign them and all, uh, those will probably be maple too. I'll probably not plywood. They'll be maple. I'll, uh, um, I'll mill down some maple and cut some shapes out of it and stuff uh, and everything. So we have those contrasts as they drop in. And, um, Bum, ba, dum. So let that uh, mill out. And yeah. So, and that'll pocket out. Let that pocket out. And um, give me just a second here. There's someone that uh, they're new, so they don't know that I teach live classes. Um, so bear with me one second. Okay. All right. So uh, let that pocket out. And anyway, so that medallion is going to be cut out of a quarter inch, uh, probably a maple plywood. Um, and uh, it'll be inset into this piece. So that walnut panel will have a nice contrasting background. Uh, there'll be an overlay. Um, I'll probably take my sheet of plexiglass. And I'll probably, I probably won't plexiglass over the name. I don't know. It might be just one continuous sheet over there. Um, and uh, sorry, guys. Let me turn that phone off. All right. But anyway, so that'll be the sign. That'll be the basic idea. Any questions up to this point? So we've got, this is going to be the back panel. Uh, and, um, if we reset this, uh, change this back, Lord of mercy, uh, change this back to a quarter of an inch just for a quick moment. Click okay. Say no on recalculating the tool pass. Um, preview that first one. Let's change this to a maple and preview the selected tool path. We'll have this part cut out, and that'll be that'll be what's inset. All right, all right, all right. Uh, any questions on this uh, tonight? Is uh, we're we've been at it two hours and nine minutes. Uh, that's going to be the it for the class. Um, I will uh, let you guys know how uh, if I've made any changes. This I'll I'll give an update, but I do have to give an update to you. Um, Real quick, uh, if you were joining me last week, uh, we had a question where someone asked if I could make a guitar. And I said in two weeks, which this is one of those two weeks, right? Next week would be the guitar class. Um, I have got to push that back. Uh, I, I don't know, another week or so. 
Um, I'm in the process right now of reconfiguring my CNC machine, uh, rewiring it, uh, adding a water-cooled spindle. Uh, I just put limit switches on it and uh, doing some things. And then at the same time, I'm trying to do an inventory, uh, create an inventory sheet for digital wood carver. So it's kind of got me a little bit tied up. I don't have enough time to focus on designing a guitar right now. There's a little bit, there's a lot involved with it. So <laughs> it will come. It's just not going to be next week like we had hoped. I don't even know if I'm going to have a class next week with everything going on uh, and um, all that wonderful jazz. So we will, uh, I'll do my best uh, to get that guitar making class uh, done, you know, uh, you know, for you guys live and everything. But right now I've got so many uh, eggs in the basket or pans in the fryer or fire, whatever, however, I got, just got so many things. I gotta, I gotta get my CNC reconfigured and rewired. Uh, and, uh, I'm changing some things around on it, adding some stuff, um, you know, cause I'm putting a water cooled spindle on it and I'm shooting a video on that, uh, shooting a video on how to add a video game controller and stuff. So the guitar will be coming. It's just not going to be next week. Uh, and all that wonderful stuff. But uh, we will have this, you know, inset uh, in uh, that back panel, that dark contrasting color back panel. And it could be walnut or cherry. I, I don't know. I most likely I like kind of like walnut. So I'll probably end up going with that. And um, that is going to be the wedding site. For these folks uh, that, they, you know, based on the kind of a general design that they passed up or they, 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 they presented and everything. Uh, and, um, you know, hopefully you got something out of this, whether it be a little bit about node editing or about uh, trimming, trimming a border around letters to create these kind of uh, cutouts, right? Um Using the curved line tool we worked with today, uh, there's quite a few things uh, that um, we got in. Uh, and uh, so my back panel will get glued up, like I said, from most likely walnut. I think that'll look better as a darker, a beautiful chocolate walnut, you know, dark walnut or something, black walnut. Uh, and... Um, and then from there, uh, like I said, this will be a maple plywood. It'll be inset. And um, then it's going to have that plexiglass front, you know, so I can drop those little medallions, whatever they're going to be. Uh, you know, a lot of, you know, I've, you know, heart shapes are fine, but they might want something different. They might want little circle coins. They might want little, uh, I don't know, chihuahuas. I don't know. You never know, right? Whatever they want they will get and uh that's what we'll uh do from there but so that'll be the inner medallion area and everything it'll have a nice contrasting background color which will look good and i want to thank you guys uh for joining me tonight i really appreciate it uh hopefully you got something out of this like i said hopefully you got something out of this and um you know uh, it gives you some ideas for signs coming up. Uh, I will definitely, once I get it done uh, for them, I've got to make another wedding sign that's going to be a text on text, which we talked about, uh, what was it, la not last week, the week before last. was Last week we did a Q&A, so the week before last we did a nice text on text, three ways to approach text on text. So they're also going to get a text on text sign of their last name with their first names, you know, Eric and Vicky, uh, to go along with this one uh, and everything. Uh, to hang on their house or whatever they want to do with it, their wall. Uh, and uh, then, of course, they had a beloved pet pass away. So I'm going to be making an urn for them, a pet urn. And also they got three projects coming to them. This is one of them. I want to show you this one uh, as we laid out and designed this. I am going to really examine this. I'm going to look at it. Uh, I'm going to decide if I'm happy with the font choices. I'm going to let them decide as well. I'm going to give them an example, save a picture. I'll save a preview image for them and uh, let them decide. And then we'll go from there, any design changes and all. But this is the general approach of, um, you know, what's going on. All right, guys. Until next time. 
I'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. Find out where that exit button is.